Adhesive dentistry, while taught in dental school, is an extremely complex system of events that must take place for clinical success. Unfortunately, a lot of these steps are either not followed through on or not followed by manufacturer's directions, and we don't get the kind of clinical success that we're looking for. Each step is predicated on success from the last step. And what happens is with time, while we're rushed into clinical everyday goings on of a practice, we don't follow the steps like we should. So success is sort of fleeting for some people. What we're hoping to do is try to eliminate those sort of missteps so everybody can have clinical success. Now when applying flowable composite, I don't like to get the flowable composite out of the marginal area. Flowable composite shrinks about 16%. And what can happen is if you use a flowable composite that's not radio-opaque, radio-lucent, and you get it on the margin, it looks like it could be decay. So I like the most radio-opaque flowable. In this case, I'm using, close, go ahead and like your place. Like Tetric Flow, the highest radio-opaque flowable composite. And we'll cure that for 10 seconds. Now we're into our last increment of composite that we're gonna use. Okay, we're gonna use A1 Gradia Direct composite. Place the composite and using a little bit of no stick material on my glove, I'll use a ball burnisher to condense the composite into the space. Now the key to this is working quickly and condensing not just placing. If you don't condense, you can pick up air voids within the composite. Now, to get that nice characteristic look, what we do so a little bit of Tetracolor or Kerr Plus on an endophile. This is Mayfair instrument. And placing it inside the composite and then moving it around, creating a groove. Now, while it gives you a groove formation, what it's really doing is separating the composite so that when you cure it, you're reducing the polymerization shrinkage of the composite. 